to Music from Home, a series of videos created by Yakima Symphony Orchestra musicians. My name is Logan Esterling and I play oboe and English horn in the Yakima Symphony. The oboe is one of the most difficult instruments to play, and the main reason for this is our reeds. As oboe players, we must learn to make our own unique reeds. I say unique because everyone makes reeds slightly differently. What works best for one player probably isn't ideal for another player. The steps of the remaking process fall into five stages. Sorting, gouging, shaping, tying, and scraping. Before we dive into these stages, I want to talk a little about the material used to make reeds. Reed makers simply refer to this as cane, but the binomial name is Arundo Donax. Arundo Donax is used to make reeds for all types of reed instruments, such as the oboe, the bassoon, the clarinet, the saxophone, and even the bagpipes. The majority of cane used for making reeds comes from the Var region of France, but it grows all over the Mediterranean and in other similar climates across the globe. Once we acquire our cane, we can start the first step in the reed making process, which is sorting. Sorting is extremely important and ensures we don't waste time on bad pieces of cane. The three main factors that reed makers sort for are quality, straightness, and diameter. When we sort for quality, we are looking for a healthy piece of cane. A healthy piece of cane has a golden brown color, tight vascular bundles, thick walls, and a shiny bark. We want to avoid cane that is pale in color, grainy, thin-walled, or dull. Straightness and diameter are assessed using a radius gauge. We use this tool with a strong backlight to find a portion of cane with consistent diameter and little to no curvature. Then the tube cane is sliced with a razor blade and cut to the correct length. The next step in the remaking process is gouging. For this step, oboists use one of many different kinds of gouging machines. In the US, there are around 10 commonly used gougers. Here we have a gouger designed by the principal oboist of the Boston Symphony. The piece of cane is placed in the machine, which gradually gouges the inside of the piece of cane until the desired thickness and curvature are reached. Before the invention of these machines, oboists used chisels and sandpaper to thin the piece of cane. We use a micrometer to confirm the gouge is accurate and even. After gouging comes shaping. This process involves trimming the gouged piece of cane to a specific shape. This is accomplished using razor blades and a shaper tip. There are hundreds of different shaper tips used by oboists, and each one is specifically designed and manufactured to the hundredth of a millimeter. The differences between shapes have to do with width and the degree to which they flare. Each shape has an effect on the final outcome of the reed. For instance, if you wanted a reed that had more natural depth to the sound, you might try a slightly wider shape. Or if your reeds tended to be flat in pitch, you might try a narrower shape. Once the piece of cane has been shaped, it's ready to be tied on. For tying, we need thread, beeswax, a ruler, shaped cane, a mandrel, and a staple. We tie the thread to a C-clamp or table leg, and then use the beeswax to wax the thread. This keeps the thread from slipping while we are tying. The staple goes on the mandrel to make tying easier and to maintain the shape of the staple. The cane is tied onto the metal part of the staple, and the cork part eventually goes inside the top of the oboe. It is important to maintain tension with both ends of the thread. This helps the two sides of the reed to form a seal, preventing air from leaking. The final stage in the remaking process is scraping. The first tool required for scraping is a knife. There are many different kinds of knives. Here are a few examples. The left knife is a heavyweight beveled knife. The middle knife is a medium weight razor knife. And the right knife is a light double hollow ground knife. Each kind of knife has a unique way of taking off cane. The bevel knife is great for taking off large amounts of cane quickly. The razor knife works well for blending and defining the parts of the reed. The double hollow ground knife is excellent for extremely detailed work. Some oboists, such as myself, 
use a combination of different knives, while some prefer to use just one type for the entire scraping process. The other tool necessary for scraping is a plaque. A plaque is a thin piece of metal that is inserted between the two blades of the reed. This allows each blade to be scraped individually and gives the reed maker more control over what section is being scraped. It is important to understand the structure of the reed prior to scraping. Oval reeds are made up of three main sections, the tip, the plateau, and the back. These three sections have different functions. The tip of the reed is where the oval player's airstream is transmitted into vibrations in the reed. In order for this to happen easily, the tip needs to be quite thin. In fact, the very end of the tip needs to be thinner than a strand of human hair. The plateau, also called the heart, is where vibrations get their pitch center and body of sound. 90% of the pitch of the reed is determined by the thickness of this section in relation to the other sections. If too much is scraped out, the reed will play too flat. The back, which is separated into two channels, is where the vibrations get their depth of sound. The tone quality of a reed can greatly be improved by scraping in this section. However, too much scraping can cause problems, such as an overall drop in pitch. The actual process of scraping starts from the moment we tie on a reed and ends when the reed no longer functions optimally. Oboe players scrape on their reeds every day in order to ensure they function to the best of their ability. The main reason reeds need continuous adjustment is because the cane constantly adapts to its environment. Humidity, temperature, and elevation greatly affect the reed and how well it vibrates. For example, in Seattle, the low elevation and humid climate allows the reeds to vibrate more readily and have larger openings. On the other hand, in Yakima, the dry climate and high elevation causes the reeds to close down and vibrate less. A reed that works great in Seattle may not work very well in Yakima. Every new reed works and sounds different than the last. Ultimately, each reed is best suited for a different musical purpose. One might be great at playing a loud Mahler symphony, while another might be perfect for playing intimate chamber music. Depending on its qualities and how you use it, a reed can last anywhere from one concert to several weeks. Because of the short lifespan, oboists end up spending more time making reeds than they do practicing their instrument. This process may sound like a lot, and it is. But when it does come time to play, we are glad that we spend so much time and care on the reeds that we make. Every so often, a dream reed will come along that allows for an unmatched freedom of expression. And that's what we strive for when we are honing our craft. I hope you've enjoyed this overview of oboe reed making. If you're interested in exploring the topic further, more information can be found at the links in the description. Thank you.